my mantra at Heat became it's all about the readers, and it is. I don't believe in doing magazines for the person that the reader wants to be, although some magazines did that very successfully. We, I always wanted to do magazines for the people that they actually are. And this was becoming that. Heat was becoming a magazine for the people, for the readers, and for who they really are. Go with what feels right is the message here. This was a cover that didn't feel right initially for us, but after we lived with it for a few more hours and a couple of days, it did feel right. This was a huge show for the right market that we were already getting letters about from our readers, so another lesson, I guess, could be listen to the feedback. And it just eventually felt like the right thing to do. It was brave, we were out on a limb, it was very different to what anyone else was doing, but you can often only have big rewards in your company if you're going to be doing something that's different, something that is changing the rules. Um, I was always told that uh, you were never to put the same person on the cover more than once every two years. And there's a lot of monthly editors who still believe that mantra. But what celebrity magazines learn very quickly is that the world of celebrity is a soap opera and you need weekly updates. And this magazine attempted to do that. This is one of three covers where we put Posh and Beck's on the cover in a row, three in a row. But it felt right because they were the people that our readers were interested in. And if you go and suddenly decide, right, well, we're going to do someone who they're fairly interested in one week, you're probably going to lose out. So you've got to relentlessly be the right magazine for them. And this, I guess, the message from this is breaking the norms. We really did. Heat changed a lot of the rules, and a lot of the celebrity magazines have done since. They really want to change things, shake them up a bit. And we said, if this is what people want, we will give it to them. And we did on a weekly basis, and it was working. By this point, we were selling around about 200, 250,000 copies every single week. And we were a magazine that was on the verge of closure. Again, this is another example of breaking away from the norms. Um, this is probably the flimsiest cover story we ever did. We had a picture. And it was the first picture where you could see that uh, Victoria Beckham had a slight bump. And we splashed on it. We went with it as the main cover feature. Again, because we knew that's what people wanted. Um, for a few years, this was our highest selling cover. And this marked a real sea change in what we were doing because Jade, as many of you know, who watched Series 3 of Big Brother, was pretty unlikable for a lot of the time. She uh, was argumentative. There was one girl in there that she kind of uh, gave a real hard time to, which is a precursor for something that happened in Celebrity Big Brother a few years later. And, um, but what she did is she reinvented herself. People got to see the real her. She wasn't a conventional magazine cover star in any way. And you know, no one put Jade on the cover of their magazine up to this point. But we did because we felt that she was right for our readers. Our readers were interested in her. This was an ordinary 19-year-old girl from South East London, a dental assistant, who had a dream. Her dream was to be famous, and she made herself famous by any means necessary. We gave her a new look, and I remember actually I had some students in from my old uh, university, and we had all the covers up from the year. And I said to them, which of those do you think was the best selling? And they pointed immediately to that. And at the point, that point, we just got the sales through. We were a bit bewildered about why it sold as well as it had. And I asked them, so why did you know instinctively that was the best seller? And they said it was because, you know, if she can do it, if she can be transformed in that way, then anyone can. And I guess that's the message of what happened with Jade. Um, as I said, this cover became quite famous. We sold over 400,000. Um, you go on all these kind of talking heads TV shows and they flash up the covers of your greatest moments and they flashed up this, which of course is always a constant uh, state of embarrassment for me because uh, as you can see from the top line, it's a girl, the latest on Posh's baby, shows that uh, celebrity magazines often don't get it right. But we went with that story, we felt right at the time. Uh, it's slightly mortifying that that cover is still shown and it has that line on it, but you live and learn. Um, another of the lessons I was always told was that um, celebrities always had to look good. It seems almost too obvious to say this. If you go in to a news agency now, or a supermarket now, you see any of the monthly magazines, whether it's Vogue, whether it's Elle, it is celebrities looking good. And sometimes they have gone to 
ridiculous extents to make them look good. In fact, in some covers you see where they don't look that much like the actual person. But it was a rule in magazines, and for us to break that rule, we had to go against decades of tradition. Um, Stars Without Makeup was um, a cover that we did because, and I'll be honest about this, one of our rival magazines, Now Magazine, had done a cover where uh, people had looked kind of awful. And um, it sold really well, despite the fact that I confidently predicted to my team that it would never work, that it will flop, and that they'd lost their minds. It sold incredibly well. And there's nothing like a good sale from your rival to book your ideas up. So Stars Without Makeup was born. And we, it sold very well. But what we found is when we got the letters and the emails from our readers, what they were saying was that we found this quite empowering. The situation you have now and the relationship you have now between readers and celebrities is that they often feel bullied by the celebrities because they always look perfect. You see them on the red carpet or the catwalk and they will give you the impression that they look like that naturally, that they get up in the morning and that's how they look. What we did with this cover is we showed that celebrities are ordinary people. It, it made the readers not feel bullied by them. It made them realise they were ordinary, it were normal, and that they weren't to feel too bad about if they looked a bit rough in the morning. And it was an empowering cover, and it made people feel a lot better. Um, the final one of my ten covers, and this is one of the best-selling covers of Heat Ever. Um, we, uh, fast forward now to July 2006, and the seventh series of Big Brother. And here's another cover that really breaks all the rules. So we've, we've put people on the cover who you wouldn't normally expect to see on the cover. We've put people on the cover who don't look great. And now we've kind of done the ultimate. We've put people on the cover who our readers just do not like. Grace in series seven of Big Brother was the hate figure. And we found that our readers wanted to read about her if she was going through a really tough time. They quite liked the fact that she was going through a miserable time and that she was heartbroken because her boyfriend in the house is getting it on with one of the other girls who's been left behind in there. And this was a really important time for us because we realised here that empowering your customers, say, listening to them, hearing what they have to say, even if it's very different to what customers have said in the future, what readers have said in the future, is very important. You know, we wanted to be the magazine for what they were really interested in, but not what they kind of aspired to be interested in. So, there's two things I hope people... I'll take some questions in a moment, actually. But there's two things I hope people can take away from this and use in their businesses. Understanding your customer is of prime importance. You know, I use the word readers a lot, but of course, you know, you can translate it in your businesses to customers. It's the same thing. And the second thing is this, be strong and have belief, because good things will happen. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers.